Sorry, you want to take the hook? Coochie started having puppies last night about 7 o'clock. Do you know when the last puppy she had? She said it was 4 o'clock. It's been four hours since Coochie last birthed the puppy. Her labor has stalled. I know, I had come back. Here he is, he's okay. She has been agitated. She's not really paying attention to her birth or continuing to have the rest of the puppies. Here, Coochie. We're just concerned that if there was puppies stuck, we don't want to have her be in a mess. Hey, guy. Only one? Yeah. What the heck's going on? It's a big lap, and normally these big dogs don't have trouble having puppies, but she does. You say I've done nothing for a while. Well, let me feel if there's any more. And if not, I'll take an x-ray and go from there. Hang on to her. You're OK, Fuji. There's nothing there that I can feel, and that looks clean. When I reach in vaginally, there is nothing there. So there's not a pup that's stuck. You and I are going downstairs for an x-ray. I think that's more important now to know what's there. Yes, thank you. Just let her keep it there for now. Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of pups yet. Eh, nothing is stuck. We take it downstairs, take x-rays, and yes, there's still pups left four or five more. So let's try with oxytocin, see if she can deliver them. The hormone oxytocin causes the uterus to contract, jump-starting labor again. OK, I don't want to do it here, because okay. I don't want puppies coming out on the way home. <laughs> they only live a few miles away. They have cattle, so they know how to give shots. So she can give Gucci the oxytocin at home and see if she can get the labor started. One cc at a time, six cc. Give her a shot, see if there's a pup coming. Then she stalls again, give her another shot. So you don't give her one and wait how long? Usually within an hour, there's one. Okay. And then with two hours, nothing more, give her another shot. Ideally, with the help of oxytocin, Coochie can give birth in the comfort of home. If it doesn't work, let us know. If nothing comes, then she can come back and we'll help her out. There is room. It's just that the uterus is not contracting. Uh, we're feeling relieved. We're happy that everything's still going well. It's just taking a very long time. Here in the parking lot. Tucker, now he is a teenager. <laughs> He's kind of a handful. And 25 miles away. Patch is a 12-year-old Appaloosa. He's got a really goofy personality. Two horses are potentially suffering from degenerative diseases, moon blindness. We had actually had to put one of our other horses down because he got it. And string halt. If he has string halt, then he'll go lame within two years. Hello. Hello. String halt is a musculoskeletal disorder where there is abnormal tendon tightness would you walk him just kind of in a straight line for me? It's something that we diagnose by watching the horse move around. The horse will start abnormally lifting their leg when they walk. It's called hyperflexion. Multiple causes can trigger string halt, and there isn't always a fix. And if you could try and get him to trot up and down, too. Like string halt, moon blindness can also result from various factors and may be incurable. Hold still. Hey, I, I, it's me. Tucker's eye is not looking good at all, but that's not moon blindness. I don't see anything that looks like string halt to me. Neither case is what the owners suspected. <sighs> that, that's an injury right in the corner there. And that hurts like the dickens. I know, I feel bad for it. Yeah. This is an infection in the eye. I am so thankful it's not moon blindness. There's a poke in there on this side. It could be a stick or just a branch or even like a rose hook. Do you think he's going to come back for a sight? <sighs> if you don't try it, you don't know. I know, I know. That's what I figured. Eyes take a long time. Yeah. But okay. if you don't do it, no, you'll no, never right, win. Right. 
we'll put drops and salve in the eye from the outside, and then from the inside, we use antibiotic. 5 cc per 100 pounds every 48 hours. I would say three or four shots in a row. And then I'll get you drops, yep. and I'll get you salve. So it takes a long time for an eye to heal. But I've seen them heal up, so I don't give up too easy. Here's your bag of goodies. If you run out and it's still a so-so, just come back for more. We don't have to see the horse again. OK. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good seeing you. I think it's more likely to be shivers than string halt. Horses with shivers have damage in the area of the brain that controls muscle movement. He seems fine otherwise. Shivers is not a painful disease. It just probably feels a little odd, but it's definitely not painful. Sometimes feeding a diet that's higher in fat and lower in starch can reduce the symptoms. Um, I don't think it's going to affect his performance probably for quite some time. He has plenty of good riding years ahead of him. It's just something he's going to be dealing with. All right, thank you. Enjoy the sunshine. I feel more relieved that it's not string halt. It's not as severe as it can be. Mobile four to bay. Okay. I'm finished. Anything new? And this is Zeus? Yeah. Zeus has had some bad luck of late. Poor little guy. Yeah. Zeus, come on. His leg was amputated just a few days ago. And now, he's got another problem. Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm not bad. So what's going on with this one? He's had a rough week. He has a very rough week. Well, he has learned how to balance himself and cock his leg. Oh, interesting. So I think that he probably tipped, and he probably caught a oh, stick. Oh, owie, owie. Yeah, this probably hurts. Zeus recently had an amputation of his limb, so he's working on trying to figure out how to balance on three legs and had an accident while going to the bathroom yesterday and actually fell over and injured his eye. <laughs> it's got a right. giant divot in its eye. It's so I big I can see it. Yeah. yeah. I knew something was wrong yesterday. He was just laying in the crate, and I'm like, what is wrong? With he doesn't this? feel good, and yeah. it was all good. See? Yep. yep, yep. He hasn't ruptured through the cornea yet, which is fantastic. Yeah. We don't want that to happen. No. And we're going to just put him on some medications to help him heal that. So okay. drops for the eye that you're going to do hopefully four times a day. Oh, wow. Our best you can do. OK, I'll go get meds. I'll be right back. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Dogs figure it out. Like, I've got three legs. OK, we're going to get it done this way. But falling over within the first few weeks sometimes happens. OK, I decided because it's so large, we're going to put him on drops and ointment. OK. We're going to do a drop in his eye, and then we just wait about a minute, and then we'll put ointment across it. OK. The cornea needs to heal. So we're going to use some antibiotics for him, and this will take about a week or so, and he should be good as new. Yeah, ouch, ouch. I'm excited that you actually have your eye open, because if my eye looked like that, it would be closed. I think it's got a lot to do with the pain meds that he's on for the leg. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I know we've messed with it too much this house morning, haven't we? One more time, and we'll leave you alone for right now carefully work his eyelids a little bit with that ointment just so it kind of melts. OK. OK, ta-da. Good boy. So today's Zeus's lucky day. His eye should heal up well, and everything's good. He will be three-legged still, but he'll have both his eyes. Super happy about that. You know, you eat your own cat food. You haven't finished that yet. Tommy is a little stray kitten that came into the clinic. Nope. Tommy was abandoned. He tested negative for all the diseases, so we raised him up, made him healthy. And you're purring. Oh, my, he's purring like crazy. Tommy's very friendly. He's a cute little kitten. Dr. Paul kind of fell in love with it. Let go. Oh, ow, sorry. I know that if we do have to give Tommy away, Dr. Paul will be sad. I know he really doesn't want to part with them. What? Get rid of those needles here. Tommy is such an easygoing cat, and that's the thing. Even feral cats, and especially young ones, can easily be tamed. You can to be a good cat. You'll be in barn, playing with the roosters. 
Kuchi is back. It's been five hours. Oh, yeah, back. And the hormone shots haven't worked as hoped. Coochie's had only one more puppy. So, I don't even remember what time it was, nine or 10 when we got home this morning. That was last. And nothing since. Nothing Pushing? Since. Not really. Maybe a few times, but no. Oh. Coochie's labor stalled again, with several puppies still inside. You're OK. You're OK. They're OK. You're OK. Yes. Nothing, huh? Hey, how much oxytocin has she had? Whatever you gave us. All of it? Yeah. Let me get a glove on, see if there's any stuck. She's not laboring really no. at all or nothing? No. She's big enough that it should come out. Now, see, and there's nothing that I can feel again. <sighs> hmm. Hmm, <laughs> hmm. See, she's panting so bad which many times is a sign of eclampsia. And eclampsia is like milk fever. Eclampsia in dogs is a lack of calcium. Sometimes it's a lack of calcium. Come here. And the other one, it was alive, huh? Mm-hmm. An oral dose of calcium should boost contractions. Oh, it doesn't taste bad. <laughs> Come on, please. OK. Gave you five minutes, and I'm coming back here from the shot of oxytocin. All right. Five minutes is just enough time for a quick hello to Tommy. That's good. And a strategic refuel. That coffee is cold, and I made new. One last dose of oxytocin. Push. Right. Okay. I'll wait and see. And I can fly it out. I wish. <laughs> While everyone waits for Coochie to start pushing again. With this trio coming in, it's about to get loud in here. Brenda lives a long ways away, so when she comes, she makes it worthwhile. So she's bringing in all her animals that don't look good. My goodness, here you are again. Hello. Now she has a cat, a goat, and a bunny. Did you have room for yourself in the car? No, <laughs> it stunk so bad. <laughs> OK, this is who? This is Jorge. And what is she doing? He just was squatting the other day after we changed the litter, and he's just sitting there for five minutes squatting. I didn't know if anything was wrong. I was on my way, and I just thought it had No, to his bladder is completely normal. Yeah. I didn't know if he was trying to poop or pee or what, but he's just squatting and squatting. And Probably just... tried to poop. OK. Hang on for a second. He's got tapeworms. When animals have tapeworms, the segments of the tapeworm actually crawl out the back end. It looks gross. See that thing there? OK, let's worm them and call it quits. Okay. That's what does it. Hold still. Not just a second. There. Okay. He goes back in. Well, can he stay out? He's like yes. really mouthy when he's in there. OK, and this is the rabbit. Yeah. He's been super dirty. And I picked him up and looked at his underneath, and he's just so sick, I didn't know. Oh, you did. yes. But, I mean, he's got no weight on him. No. But I feel bad because it's been a couple weeks, and his pen is full of pee. He probably has a urinary tract that's infection. So that's what we're going to do first. Hagrid, the bunny, is all dirty, actually urinating all over. And that most likely is a urinary tract infection. So antibiotics should help for him. OK, now, what's going on with the goat? Um, He had the poops a couple weeks ago. Skinny. Yeah, dirty butt. And when I picked him up today to bring him, he was um, weak. Yeah. Oh. Still white. Baby. OK, let me get a fecal out of him. On the physical exam, you find out that the mucosal membranes, especially in the eyes and the mouth, are pale. That means that most likely there are some parasites there, and that's why an animal like this is anemic and the mucosas are pale. There's a little bit there. OK, let me find out. Any more? Nothing? Nothing. Not pushing? No. Thank I'll you. Let him know. Yeah. 
Kuji is no closer to delivering her puppies. If the hormones and minerals have no effect, the next step is surgical. Oh, my goodness. Coccidiosis, there's a whole bunch of them in there. This one would be in how much? Oof. I don't know. 10 pounds. I, really? That's it? Yeah. OK, so he gets a quarter pill twice a day for 10 days. Then you can stop for 10 days. If he still has diarrhea, you do it again. Oh, Jorge, no. You're fine. OK, seek out worms. This is for the others. Good. OK, Brenda. Yeah. Nothing, huh? <sighs> OK, we'll do a C-section. OK, we need hands. Surgery is the last resort. Bingo. The puppies have to come out. We're ready. I am, too. Oh, boy. Grab it. Grab him. What we do now is do a C-section. Go ahead. There's another one. So when you open them up, you just make sure that you get every single one out and as fast as possible. And here's one more or two more. There. And here's the last one. That's it. OK, get busy. Without mom to lick the puppies, Chris and Missy mimic the action. <sighs> Shoot. The friction warms the puppies and hopefully stimulates their breathing. Will you check this yellow one? Oh, my lord. I got squeakers. How many do we have out? Three. And these were all in one uterus horn. That's why she couldn't get it out. Girl. 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 Boy. We're just thankful for live puppies always. Five healthy, squeaking puppies. Yeah, OK. All I'm all set. Thankful to be going home. OK. When we get home, we're going to let Kuji rest and recover. And she had been through a lot all night and all day. So it was time to get her home and comfortable. It's the end of October. Today is Halloween, so the staff was dressed up in our costumes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a velociraptor. I'm wearing my quad. I was going to say that. Why didn't you? I don't know. <laughs> it's always a fun time for us. For humans and felines. Two hands. Tommy Tater didn't. He said he told her. He quit pooing, but that was all. Although Tater would prefer Tommy not get too comfortable. Tater is very territorial and does not want any other cats running around in the clinic. All right, guys, okay. ready out here? Hang on for a second. You sit. A quick snap of the ghoulish good looks. All right, there you go, guys. And it's right back to work. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Brutus is a walker and plot mix. He's about four or five years old. That's a big ear. Mm -hmm. That's what makes him cute. <laughs> yeah. He has a abscess on his left cheek. We've tried multiple things to take the abscess away. Penicillin, antibiotics. It just kept coming back. Hello. Hi. This must be Brutus. Yeah. This is Brutus. Hi, bud. And we've what... tried everything. 
Brutus's owners have been trying to help him out as best as they can, but when I aspirate the lump, definitely it looks like there's an infection. What I'd like to do is clip this and put a little puncture in it so that it can drain a little bit. He's pretty calm, so I, I think I'll be able to do it with just some local to numb it without having to sedate him. But we'll go do that right now. And we'll be right back. Come on, sir. Come on, buddy. Though Brutus is a fearless hunting dog. Good boy. Today, he is quite the scaredy cat. Come on, bud. So we're going to put a little local on that lump, clip it, open it up. I want to drain as much of the fluid out of here as possible and treat it from the inside out. Boy. As long as we keep the infection draining out and he's getting the appropriate antibiotic dosage and frequency, I think this infection should resolve. All your buddies are going to be so jealous. <laughs> He just looks so, like, defeated. Poor guy. Come on, mister. You can still walk with it, I swear. He wants the towel. He's like, no, let me have it. He doesn't like slidey floors. Good boy. I just stuck this bandage on so he doesn't bleed in the car. Just take it off when you get home so that it can drain again. Let me know in like a week or so how he's doing. We might need to do antibiotics for a longer period of time, just as long as it's improving. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling really confident that it's gonna heal up finally. Oh, look who's here! Look who's there! Two special guests are excited to join today's party. Are you the pick of the patch? Abigail and Silas get to share their first Halloween, weirdly, because it was canceled last year. So the two of them are coming over to trick or treat with Oma and Opa. That doesn't look like Oma, does it? <laughs> no, take it off. <laughs> well, you don't look like you either. You've got little ears on. Trick or treat. You haven't seen me enough. What? It's always fun to see the kids come in. <laughs> Have some cake. You got frosting on there? Yeah, that's a good part, huh? Well, thank God you were home. I know. I have a pot belly pig named Scooter. He's approximately five years old, and this morning he was attacked by two dogs. I don't want him going into shock. He's got a pretty nasty gash on his ear and he's got many puncture wounds all over his face. Scooter's my sweetest pig, and I'm upset that he got hurt like this. Poor bud. That's the pot-bellied pig? He's got a okay. nice slice behind his ear here, and he's got some punctures. He's got some and by his eye. How old still? He's still shaking, though. Hey, don't you try to bite me. See, there's just a little cut there. See that? That's just draining. The rest is just running down. And that's not worth throwing up. OK. Good news. Scooter's largest wound is superficial. And the other one, I want to see the other side. I got a door on this side. OK, so. good. Shut this. Yeah. Gosh. Oh. See this here? That is actually the worst. That one is? Yeah. OK. The dogs tore open a gash on Scooter's right ear. If I put a staple in here, that most likely will hold. She has a couple scrapes. There is one little cut. And the main thing is right by the ear, but there is a bigger hole. If I put a staple in there, would you let me do it? <laughs> Good luck with that one. I'll be right back. OK. Don't get no ideas. That pole fix you up, buddy. Just take it easy. 
<laughs> that was easier than I thought. The staples probably can stay in several weeks. Spray with disinfectant. That's all you have to do. Okay. I think he'll be fine. Just spray all of his Just spray all. With the... Yeah, there's this one and the one on the other side, and then that ear. Right. I think that's good enough. All right, thanks. So oh, much. not as bad as I thought it was. Yeah, and I thought it was worse, too. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yep. I'm feeling great, and it looks great, and I'm sure he'll do great. All pigs like their butts scratched. <laughs> I'm sure Scooter's pretty tired today after everything that happened to him, but he'll recover at home just fine. Knock, knock. Our neighbor Jake is coming today. Doc. Hello, Jake. Good to see you. He has a daughter who loves kittens, and he was looking for a kitten. Doc said that he had a nice cat that was a feral cat, but it was very sweet. Come on, let's have a look. This way. When you can find him a home for kids that want a cat like this, that's just the perfect thing. You pick him up and he purrs. What's his name? Well, you called him Tommy the Tomcat because that's all it was. He is just the sweetest guy around. Oh, yeah, he's cool. He's very docile, very nice, very friendly. So I'm excited. I know my daughter's going to be very excited. You think kids will like it? I think Athena Good. is going to lose her mind. That's what <laughs> I, I think. hope so. I think she's going to go crazy. Good. Diane, Tommy's going next door. I'm glad to see that Tommy's going to have a good home, and he'll be right next door, so I will be able to see him when I want to. Good. Thank you. Good luck. Awesome. Thank you so much. That is a perfect match. Perfect. All right. All right, you ready, Tomcat? This little kitty's found a home. All right, let's do it, dude. This little kitty is hurt. Oh, it looks kind of irritated. Cal is here with Mo. Somehow he has injured his eye. We aren't quite sure what happened. He's a very skittish cat, so I I'm just concerned about that eye. I hope it's nothing too bad where he might have to have surgery or something on it. Just something simple. Looks like he tore his third eyelid. Every cat and dogs as well have the nictitating membrane, as it is officially called. But it's basically just a thin extra layer of tissue that can moisturize and clean the cornea of the eye very quickly without actually having to blink. It can just kind of flick across. So that's what this little flap is. Okay. I don't see any damage to the eye itself. There's just a lot of irritation. Yeah. Well, so, him and his brother like to wrestle, so. Yeah, I wonder if he got like a claw in his eye or something like that, and that's what tore that third eyelid. Okay. I'm going to um, put a little bit of um, a, some numbing on there, numbing. and then I can just kind of trim the, the flappy part off, and then we'll put him on some antibiotics for his eye. Okay. And we'll be right back, okay? Bye, buddy. Take good care of him. This little flap that's hanging will probably heal faster if that kind of loose part is just quickly removed. I have to do a minor eye surgery. Just minor? Just minor. First, I'm just going to apply a little bit of a local anesthetic to numb the eyelid so Mo isn't feeling any of what I'm going to do next. Perfect. And then quickly remove the loose tissue. Bam. I'm going to have Cal treat with some topical antimicrobial ointment, but I think it should heal up pretty quickly now that the offending flappy piece of eyelid has been removed. All right, mister. Okay, bye. No, wait for goodbye. All right, he did fantastic. Awesome. You might notice a small amount of like bloody discharge yeah. for the rest of today. But with the ointment, that will take care of the infection, and mm -hmm. then the irritation will all heal up. But OK. Just in a few days. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. He did great. He's my little buddy. When I get Mo home, we're going to 
give them some good kitty treats and just treat them right. Where are they? Maybe there, but see, it is hard to get there too. Doc and Charles are trying to find their next patient. And that's not where the horses are. There's no horses here. Where the heck did he keep the horses? Come around the way you came the first time. My horse, Chateau Villa, is a secretariat granddaughter, and she's 28 years old. She's been my favorite horse. I've had her since she's been four years old. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Here's the deal. Chateau's been a little grumpy lately. I want you to look at her. Yeah? But if she's in pain, I'm afraid. Just get a halter on her, and I'll have a feel and a look. All right. The equine dentist suggested she may even have a tooth disease and is in a great deal of pain. And I'm afraid that I'll have to put her down. And I'm not ready to do that yet. Come on, sweet. Good girl. Sherry has this older horse, and it's losing weight. You're a good girl, aren't you? You're old. Oh, stand still. I would love to hear that there's no disease. I hope there's no tooth pulling and that somehow she's just going to be OK. Holy cow, look. The front teeth are terrible. Yeah. The teeth are wore down to the gums. There is no points on there at all. These teeth here don't hurt. She can't chew it because the teeth are wore out. Okay. See? When the teeth are bad and they cannot chew it so good, they do not get enough saliva. Sometimes they get a plucked esophagus. So these older horses really benefit from good nutrition in them, and they last for a long time. What we need to do is a big diet change. Most grains are pelleted, but extruded is like a cooked thing, so there's no need for them to chew. And it doesn't plug up that esophagus. They make plenty of beads that are for more senior horses that are having these type of problems to allow them to be able to gum their food or have it dissolve in their mouth. We're putting weight on the horse. Oh, and nice. that's what I want you to do first. OK. Sherry, this is good. I am so happy. I'm so amazed. I was expecting the worst. I was really not looking forward to this call at all. I was so afraid I'd have to put her down. No. I'm totally elated, totally. Yes? Anybody like sardines here? What? I don't eat sardines. Does anybody like sardines here? I'll take sardines. Yeah. Yeah. You? yeah. Right. But right. you don't like them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, little mayonnaise on the toilet. Cracker. <laughs> oh, yeah. How many people give you sardines? Not many, but we'll use them. Yeah, we'll <laughs> use them. Thank Give you so much. Give me a hug. I've been a client of Dr. Pohl's for 28 years. We're yeah, getting old yeah. together, you know that? And I love him. He's a very good vet. Love what Dr. Pohl does. Thank you. We'll see ya. Okay. Hi, baby. I'm out here at Chris's to take a look at his young calf. They're so cute. The calf is very bouncy and playful, but hasn't been bearing weight on one of its front legs. Chris wasn't able to be here at the same time, but he's concerned about a pretty severe injury. Ow. Its elbow joint is very swollen and painful. I don't feel any bone on bone scraping or fracture or dislocation or anything like that. I'm suspicious of a joint infection. So I'm going to poke it with a needle. I'm going to tap the joint to see if it's swollen from infection or if there's some other fluid in there or what the situation is, just to get me a bit more information. I'm trying to distract him. 
Sometimes the best way to distract a calf is to give them something to suck on. I'm sorry, I don't have any snacks for you. I'll give them something else to think about while I'm kind of doing things that aren't as pleasant. Hey, no, that's not really food. And since I don't have anybody else here to restrain the calf, I kind of have to be a little bit creative. Ooh. Pus. Nasty. Confirms Dr. Lisa's suspicion. Joint infections can happen in young calves from septicemia, which they can get from either pneumonia or an umbilical infection. Joint infections can be difficult to resolve completely, and this one looks pretty severe. I know, stop moving. But I'm hoping that systemic antibiotics are gonna be enough to clear it up. I feel weird. Hi, Chris, this is Dr. Jones calling from Pole Vet. A course of antibiotics, and hopefully this calf can grow up happy and healthy. If you have any questions, uh, just give me a call and we can talk more about it. Otherwise, have a great afternoon. Bye. Go right ahead. You want an extra honor? Um, probably, probably will be. Let's get you back. This morning, I let the dogs out the back door. We'll look after it for you. Just OK. As I was walking out, I heard a thud. I heard my dog yelping, and I ran out the door, and she got hit by a car. I know it probably hurts simply. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I yelled for her, and as I was running down the driveway, she come around the corner. She was limping pretty good. Wouldn't put no weight on her back left foot. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Could be better. All right. So what's <laughs> going on with Camo? What happened? I heard a thud and her yelping. OK. She started coming to me. Okay, can she stand at all? It's all right, baby girl. Hang on. Good girl. OK, lay down. That's fine, too. We're going to do a physical exam and look at the body and look to see if she's been injured somewhere. It banged up. Yeah. Looking for fractures, mostly. I moved it earlier, and she was yelping. Depending on where the force and the pressure was applied to the body of the dog when the car hit it. I'm not finding anything that feels broken on that side. Now, is there some looseness in her pelvis, which might be puppiness and might okay. be something else? We're going to take some x-rays. There's some instability in her hips, and I want to see what that looks like by x-ray. All right, I'll take her. There is something that's different than normal here, and we're going to use the x-ray to help us diagnose what that different than normal really is. All right, hang on here, sweetie. Really concerned about anything being broken. My hope is that she'll just heal and nothing worse. Well, let's try to keep my weight up on her back, too. She goes everywhere with me. She does everything with me. She's the world. No, it's still you're all right. You're all right. You're all right. Yes. Okay. You did not like that, did you? So with Camel's x-rays today, the good news is there's no fractured bones. And what I see is there's a dislocation between her sacrum and her hips. Called a sacroiliac luxation, the bones that connect the spine and the pelvis are separated. All right. This is not an uncommon finding with a hit by car. Okay, yeah. This causes the back end to be sort of wobbly and more wobbly than normal in a puppy. So what she's done is she's dislocated her pelvis. When you put your hemp bones, you can feel an unsteady move. So it's going to take a little bit for that to solidify again. She could go to a referral place for surgery if the owners are interested in having some plates put in to help stabilize this quicker. If you wanted a perfect pelvic fix, she needs surgery to have that done. The other way to help her heal was letting nature take its course and help bind those bones back together. Ideally, she goes outside leash walks only for about three or four weeks. OK. And not a whole lot of running loose being crazy. She just needs it to be quiet. So I will get some pain meds for her. OK. The good news is she's a puppy. The bone structure there is already in a growth phase, so it actually helps her heal faster from this injury. So she gets these, and they're flavored, and someone will take them for a treat. And she's like, oh, not so much today. There we go, down the hatch. Yeah. All right. 
We'll get you headed for home. Right, right. right. I feel relieved, a little concerned about trying to keep her on a leash because she doesn't like leash. <laughs> She's not going to be happy, but she'll be all right. Oscar is a four-year-old boxer. He's a mama's boy. <laughs> Come on. His personality is wherever I'm at, he's at. And that's kind of what clued me into that something was wrong. This morning, he just wasn't himself. He just wasn't like, hey, mom, where are we going? He was like, hey, I'm not going anywhere. Hi. Good morning. How are you? I am better than the dog, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, he looks like, scared. Yeah, he's normally not a scared dog. No. In the four years that we've had him, he's never had an illness, so yeah, it was very concerning. Come on, huh? What's the problem? Oscar, can you say hi? No. Huh? What's the problem? This is what happens when dogs. When they don't feel good, they act differently. Good pet owners will notice that, and this is why Carrie is bringing them in. Let's start with taking the temperature. It's okay, sweet. It's okay. He is just not himself. He's usually just a happy dog. Oh, he's got a temperature. No, we're talking. 103.1. Now we even know why he didn't feel good. Oh, right, right. It's 103, that means it just has little temperature. Has he been outside too long or so? He's a farm dog, so he's outside with me. Yeah, every he's been, time been raining and everything. Did mm -hmm. he get wet a couple times? Probably. Uh, probably. This crazy weather. I think that's what it is. It sounds like he has a cold, and you see that quite a bit in animals because it gets hot, it gets cold. We put a coat on, take a coat off. Those animals cannot do it. Okay, I'm gonna give him a shot, okay. and we'll put him on pills. Okay. Hopefully, he'll just snap right out of it. Thanks, doctor. Oscar's gonna be fine. Some antibiotics will take care of it, and hopefully that you know, the weather will straighten out and he'll just run with her all over the farm. Cool. It's okay. Yes, don't be so scared. You're a boxer. Huh? Yes. yes. Okay. He's all nice. Right. I like his face. We're going to keep an eye on him and hope he bounces right back to his perky self. He's going to have a lot of couch time this weekend. He's totally okay with that. And I'm not going to complain either. Chateau. This fall, Sherry feared the worst when her horse Chateau Via was losing weight. That little girl. Dr. Paul said, let's try her feed. And Chateau has done very well on that. Before, her ribs were quite pronounced. But now, it's hard to even seal them. So, wonderful. I love the trail ride, so I'm hoping to do more of that with Chateau this summer. What are you doing, Kitty? My daughter wanted a cat. Doc said, hey, we have a great solution for that, and we have this nice Tom cat. Would you like to take him home with you? He's a really nice, friendly cat. If I could keep him out of the dog food, you know. <laughs> You having fun? You find a piece of fuzz? My daughter insisted that we switch his name so it's not Tomcat. It's Sox, S-O-X, to be specific. She would ensure that you get it correct. What's up, Sox? What are you doing, Bubba? He's probably one of the coolest cats I've ever dealt with. He just loves to cuddle and, you know, be pet and be around people. He's very affectionate and he wants to be held and played with. And he's very happy. 